Coming up on the news at noon, the president puts a stop in Boise on his visit to the West. Air Force One coming in right now. And the main reason he's here, wildfires. He takes a tour of the National Interagency Fire Center. What that agency does to help fight fires around the country. We'll get to that too. There you see Air Force One coming in, ready for touchdown any second now. Let's get ready to go to uh, our Mark Johnson right now, who is on the tarmac as Air Force One touches down right now. Hey, Mark. I've seen a couple of uh, Air Force One and two landings, and it's always a majestic sight. There is the President of the United States touching down at Gowan Field. He left the White House early this morning on a trip here to the West that is going to span two states and three separate trips. His first trip right here. Obviously, he is uh, here to visit the National Interagency Fire Center, which is located on the other side of Gowan Field. This is going to be a much different presidential visit than the last couple that we have witnessed with President Obama coming to Boise State for two separate rallies here in 28, 2008, and 2015. Again, both of those at Boise State. This is more like a presidential field trip. It is going to be a quick, less than two hour visit to NIFSI, which of course is the control center for fighting wildfires around the country on the other side of Gowan Field. He is here to help pump up his $1 trillion infrastructure bill that was passed last month by the Senate. That includes money to raise wages for federal firefighters and forest service staffs. Now, normally, this is a visit that we would see the Secretary of the Interior uh, make a trip to. Sally Jewell was the last one to be here. Of course, former Secretary of the Interior Dirk Kempthorne, who makes his home here as the former governor of Idaho, spent a lot of time at NIFSI. This is a first as far as a sitting president to visit this control center for fighting fires. Let's take a look now as we wait for Air Force One to make its way back here to the tarmac where he will board a motorcade and make that trip across Gowan Field. Let's take a look at the timeline of the presidential visit. Um, at 2.15, he's going to be part of a briefing. We understand, uh, we learned today that Governor Little is going to be a part of the local delegation that will welcome him. And that, Kim and Doug, as you know, will be an interesting uh, meeting in the wake of the much publicized criticism that Governor Little uh, leveled against the president and his vaccination mandate plan that was announced last week. The governor claiming there could be potential legal action that the state of Idaho will join other Republican states in uh, taking part in. He will take part of that briefing from the representatives of NIFSI. Then he'll tour NIFSI at 12.55. At 1.55, a little over two hours after touching down here, he will depart Gowan Field on his way to Sacramento, where he will visit, uh, survey the devastating Calder fire. Then his third and final stop in Southern California for a seven o'clock Long Beach rally of course, California's Governor Gavin Newsom is facing a recall vote going on right now. But again, this stop in Boise without the normal fanfare that we normally see in presidential visits. I was here in 2009 when then Vice President Joe Biden visited the Special Olympics World Winter Games with a delegation of other celebrities. His wife, Dr. Jill Biden, was here. And of course, on that stop, he made his way all over the valley. He was in Nampa at the Idaho Center. He was in downtown Boise, where he watched a Special Olympics hockey game. He hosted Special Olympics events. This is nothing at all like that. And I'm sure we're taking our, our live camera right now at Air Force One as it taxis its way over here. And it will be here in a matter of moments. Air Force One, by the way, what a bird. Uh, this is one of the last Air Force Ones of its kind being phased out now in a $5 billion program that will roll out the new Air Force One in a couple of years. And President Biden will be the first president 
to be in the newly refurbished Air Force One from Boeing. Idaho's delegation, Kim and Doug, as you well know, has long lobbied Congress and the White House for more state control land uh, in our state to better manage wildfire protection. I know that that will be something that is on our congressional delegation's plate once they get the information on what the president saw today. But again, that is left to be seen. 60, over 60% 60 of Idaho lands is owned by the federal government. So again, Kim, Doug, there's Air Force One with President Joe Biden beginning his Western trip today, witnessed by local members of the media, national members of the media. Telemundo is here, but this is a historic touchdown indeed. Mark, I just want to take a minute to watch this. I mean, we've been watching, but I'm marveling at the size of Air Force One, and I don't think people realize how big of an airliner it is. When we saw it come in, you could see the Alaska airplanes in the background, the Southwest planes, the fighter jets, and it towers over in size those mm -hmm. other aircrafts. Air Force One is some 4,000 square feet of space yeah. inside. Of course, there's a conference room. High tech everything. High tech everything. It is obviously the president's office in the sky or wherever he is traveling. 4,000 square feet of floor space on three levels. This is how big this Air Force One is, including, of course, an extensive suite for the president that features a large office, a bathroom, a conference room. There's even a medical suite, Doug, that is available with an operating room. God forbid if anybody needed that. A doctor traveling all the time on Air Force One. This is so big that it can't just land on any air. It can't just land on any airport. The, mm -hmm. the runway has to be so long to accompany you know such a large aircraft. what's remarkable about that? Go ahead, go ahead. You know what's so remarkable about that, Kim, is the uh, the new Air Force One is going to be even bigger, more spacious, more rooms, more seats to accommodate more people. And again, the $5 billion new look Air Force One is going to be put, is going to be commissioned and put into service in two years. I remember when Mayor, then Mayor Dave Beter, got to ride on Air Force One when he was a guest of Joe Biden flying back to the mayor's conference in Washington, D.C. He took pictures and showed me it was literally a bowling alley inside <laughs> some of those areas in Air Force One. It is massive. I guess I'm a little bit surprised to hear that they even allowed him to take pictures yeah. on the inside of the plane because so much of it is, of course, classified and highly secret. And don't want that kind of information getting out, but it is right. a fantastic airplane. Mark, are you getting any indication that the president will come over and talk to the reporters th this uh, afternoon, well, this morning? We are not getting uh, that impression that he is going to address those of us that are standing here either on or next to a flatbed truck. Uh, every president is different, as you guys know. President Trump loved those pre-helicopter boarding impromptu press conferences. They called them the screaming helicopter press conferences where he would come and address the press pool. But uh, Joe Biden is a little different. He's also on a very, very tight schedule, as I mentioned. So his motorcade is here. It flew in on a cargo jet that is parked uh, not far away from Air Force One. But we're hoping that he comes over and addresses us um, you just need to I yell really loud, to see Mark. The governor arrive. Mark, you just need to yell loudly. Uh, yeah, I could. President I Biden, know. President Biden. <laughs> I know. And how right? about how about the airport employee whose job is to drive that truck right there? Hey, what are you doing today? I'm going to drive the stairs <laughs> up to Air Force One so President Biden and his entourage right. can come out to Boise <laughs> right. for a presidential visit. How about that? He's going to have something to talk about tonight at dinner. No doubt about it. <laughs> but I tell you, the president's uh, schedule is right on schedule right now. He was scheduled to land at 1150. They've already got the gangway uh, going out there to the aircraft this after, this morning. I keep saying this afternoon because so I've that must be like a, a backdoor entrance. It seems right. like that. Mark, is that security detail probably coming out? I would imagine, and it looks like a, the press pool is coming out as well that well, travels with the that, Air Force. That One. is members of the press pool, exactly, exactly. There are uh, there is a gaggle, as they say, of press pool 
uh, staff that fly all the time Somewhere. with the president, and those are members of the media. You can see the motorcade behind me, uh, led by the Boise Police Department. Just got a wave right there. Of course, the the uh, you can see the FBI here, Secret Service. Here is the president's mo motorcade, his limo. Uh, and Mark, I believe the, we're seeing uh, Boise bulletproof Mayor bulletproof windows. And uh, sorry for the delay, Mark. I believe we're seeing uh, Boise Mayor Lauren McLean there in the blue dress. Um, one of the dignitaries, local dignitaries, if you will. That is Lauren McLean. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she had tweeted out earlier this morning that she's looking That's forward right. to... That's right. I still don't see the governor. She had tweeted this morning that she's looking forward to sharing the work the city of Boise and the community is doing to address climate change with the president. Of course, uh, the president, a big part of his visit today, not only talking about wildfires, surveying the damage, seeing what NIFC does, but also talking about causes of it and how long our wildfire seasons are now basically a year round event because of climate change and you know the the length of the fire seasons has gotten about 70 days longer since mm -hmm. the 1970s compared to what it is today and uh, the mayor also um, tweeting that uh, let's see here where is it well she's uh, she's looking forward to sharing with the president the vision for the city of Boise including goals with their climate action roadmap and that is the city of Boise itself as an entity wants to be carbon neutral by 2035 and the goal for the entire city is to be carbon neutral by the year 2050, including all of the residents of Boise. There is the president of the United States making his way down off of Air Force One. Again, his first visit to Idaho since coming here in 2009 and he is going to make his way inside the car after his greeting with Boise Mayor Lauren McLean. But no governor. You're not seeing Governor Little there, Mark? I, I do not see Governor Little or any members of Idaho's congressional delegation. Uh, he could, they could be already be at, at Nipsey. Mm -hmm. Nipsey. Yeah. Yeah. No tie. I noticed the president was not wearing a tie. I think he's trying to uh, embrace the Idaho style, <laughs> the laid back style of Idahoans. He just needed some cowboy boots. He uh, he's he's going with the Brian Holmes school of no tie clothing. And I wish he would. I, I was right. hoping maybe he would have had his aviators on as well. He's famous for, of course, the Ray-Ban aviators. We should mention that uh, the only local media representative that is going to be part of the president's tour of the National Interagency Fire Center is our own Joe Paris. He is already there uh, getting ready to follow the president as he does, as I mentioned at the top of the show, his field trip, if you will, his presidential field trip of the control hub in fighting wildfires around the country. So Joe Paris is there. We'll bring that to you as soon as the president arrives over there. Our coverage is going to continue as long as the president is here. Yeah, and you know we do have word from the governor's office that he will be meeting with the president during his visit today. That's according to a spokeswoman for the governor's office. Also, the governor will be participating in a roundtable discussion. Um, that includes, of course, the president at the National Interagency Fire Center. Watching there as he had a conversation with Boise Mayor Lauren McLean for a good couple of minutes, it mm -hmm. seemed like. Of course, the president has always said he likes to have good conversation. He's a talker. Would love to have been a fly on the wall there to hear what was spoken between the two. Um, Doug, yeah. you were mentioning climate change is a big issue with uh, the mayor and wants to be leading the country in terms of, of her action for climate change. Very big priority for the mayor and um, she also said that uh, to commemorate the president's visit and highlight the city's commitment to open space and the America the Beautiful initiative that she's going to gift him a painting of the Boise foothills titled Spring Walk in the Foothills by Rachel, I'm going to say Tanilak. Pardon me if I mispronounced your name, but it's a great picture of the Boise foothills. I didn't see her having it with her there. She didn't just drag it out onto the tarmac with her say that, but at some point today she plans to gift the president with that painting. 
I kind of, you know, in some ways though, I woke up this morning and I saw the beautiful blue sky and I thought, okay, this is great. The president is coming in to see how beautiful Idaho is, how beautiful our city is. Of course, he's been here before, um, not in the capacity of president, but in some ways I was kind of hoping you guys that we had the smoky skies. Oh. I want him to see what we've been going through for the last couple of months oh, and what the me. wildfires have done believe to our beautiful city. Me. Go ahead, Mark. Once he gets, once he gets to NIFSI, he will see pictures, video, graphics, satellite images of what our state and our city has looked like over low the last two and a half months. He will get plenty of information and plenty of looks at what this place has been like uh, prior to Friday's storm. There will be no lack of of imposing and impressing on him the need for Congress and for the White House to uh, help mitigate what has been happening in our West and will continue to happen for a long time to come if steps aren't taken to, uh, to get this under control. Because right now, we really need more fire control management. We need more resources. And those folks at NIFSI are going to impress upon the president how badly that is needed right now, I'm sure. So Mark, uh, you're there obviously at the airport. Our Andrew Bartline has been, uh, he's close by outside of the parameter of the airport where a group of protesters have been gathering since what, Doug? How uh, early? Pretty early this morning, about 8.30 or so, 9 o'clock. And that, that crowd really has grown quite a bit. There's our Andrew Bartline right now. And you can see the crowd behind him. Andrew, set the scene for us there. How big of, the crowd, of a crowd would you say is there now? Yeah, this is pretty big, Doug. This is the biggest protest I've seen since I've been at seven for the last three months or so. Now there is a protest. There is a protest at St. Luke's outside Meridian that was put at 1,300. This is definitely bigger than that. It's hard to count because it's so long. Go down the road that way. There's the Denny's, but up this way, that's where you see the gate, the front gate of Nifsey, and it's long and it gets real dense up at the top. We'd show you that big cluster but we can't manage on live TV with signs that some of them having profanity. We do have some video about what this protest has looked like, what some of those signs show. We'll go ahead and roll that for you now. It has been mostly peaceful. Everybody's getting along fine. There was one man who's wearing a mask that got heckled out of here. He had to be escorted with police. Now the Boise police, the Nampa police, and the Idaho State Police are all here. I did get that confirmed from a Boise police officer. So we know there are those three agencies managing it, but it really hasn't seemed necessary so far as everybody seems just fine getting along. Of course, there are murmurs and talks. When is President Biden going to land here? I talked to some folk about why they're upset with President Biden. It ranges from his history of his policies in the Senate. It ranges from when he was vice president under President Obama. He didn't like that administration. Some people are very upset with Afghanistan. And of course, this recent mandate where a private business that has over 100 employees, they all have to be vaccinated. Uh, people don't agree with that either. So there's a wide range of why people are upset and they're all coming out here together because they don't like the Biden administration. We'll throw it back to you on the desk. Hey, Andrew, I know that you talked with a, a, a veteran, I believe, who was a, a fighter pilot that you had, had a conversation with this morning. And he, he was mostly upset about the Afghanistan situation and the hectic withdrawal from there. And of course, the 13 service members who were killed just in the last days of the evacuation. Can you sum up a little bit of what his points were? Yeah, he was just upset with how it was executed. We really didn't get into detail about whether he thought we should have left Afghanistan or not. I don't have those details. How it was executed, he was very upset with. He thought it could have been managed better. He thought it was unnecessary, the violence that happened. And of course, uh, there are people that died on both sides. We had soldiers that died, and of course, citizens of Afghanistan who died. I think he used the term that people were abandoned there. Uh, talking about our troops specifically. He feels that President Biden abandoned our troops in Afghanistan, and he was very upset about that. Andrew Bartline reporting live outside where a couple thousand at least it looks like supporters or protesters I should say are outside the airport perimeter there protesting President Biden's visit and his policies. I've never gone to NIFSI from the tarmac of the Boise Airport. Doug, would the president, would his motorcade be going outside that route to see those protesters or is there an entrance to NIFSI there on the tarmac? I, I mean, believe it's essentially they, the same location. They're on the outside. Yeah, basically you could see the motorcade just drive 
right across Gowan Field to get to Nipsey from so where they So he would drive and see those protesters, he you think? He might see them through the fence, mm -hmm. um, but he wouldn't be like directly, I wouldn't think, right in contact mm -hmm. with them there. A short drive to It was a Nipsey. very, very short drive. <laughs> Probably one of Just the shortest motorcade routes that they had to have taken here in recent times. Uh, again, just looking at Air Force One, we want to go over kind of the timeline. So if you're just joining us, the president, we could see Air Force One coming in to Boise right at about 1140. Mm -hmm. uh, he was scheduled to land at 1150. Uh, and then he, as we mentioned, will be going straight to Nipsey, where he will receive a briefing from um, top fire managers who are in charge of allocating resources when the nation's biggest fires erupt. They are the ones to say, all right, smoke jumpers from Ohio, you come here, you go there. Mm -hmm. It's it's a, a chess game, if you will. And you did a really good story about how Nipsey does the inner workings. And if people want to check that out on our website too, just search for that because it's a really good explanation of what this national interagency fire center, it coordinates firefighting efforts mm -hmm. across the country. Mm -hmm. So it's really a fascinating piece that you did if people want to find out more about what Nipsey does on the inside. It really, so I, I spoke with um, Boise BLM. So it's it's all, you know, it's it's just like the military, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously there's jurisdictions they follow, um, protocols they follow, but let's say there's a fire that, that were, was burning right now out at Lake Lowell and a dispatcher from uh, Boise BLM would take that call and if they need more resources, they are allowed to borrow from neighboring districts, okay. BLM districts such as Twin Falls. They cannot jump all the way to Idaho Falls though. So if they need to borrow resources or crews because the fire is out of control, that's when they have to go to the next tier. It's a three tier system. Mm -hmm. And so then they would get the Great Basin management team involved. There are some, I think, 10 uh, geographical areas right. in the nation. We are, of course, in the Great Basin district jurisdiction. And so then they would manage the fire. But then let's say that the fire continues to grow or there are too many fires burning within our jurisdiction and we need more people, more resources. Great Basin would then turn to NIFSI and say, you take it from here. And of course, right. NIFSI is at the top. And I, I talked with the three with the system. Great Basin smoke jumper mm -hmm. not too long ago as well. And she was telling me that they're based here in Boise. They do most of their training, mm -hmm. but they can go anywhere yeah. in the country, wherever they're needed. That's where they get sent. It was fascinating being there at the, at the headquarters where dispatch is and he would the dispatcher I was talking to Mark was his name. He would put in uh, the fire, the, la the the coordinates of where the fire was burning. He would be talking on the phone with the commander on the ground, the boots on the ground, and he would put in the computer system and it would tell him exactly how much resources to send, send this and this and that. He can also use his discretion mm. to say, man, my guy on the ground is saying it eh, is looking like, you know, it's a little bit more windy, maybe it's going to kick up, maybe it's not going to be as big as we think, because you don't, the key is you don't want to oversend and you don't want to undersend. Just got to get it right. You huh? got to get it right. It's a juggling act. You don't want to oversend because what if you've got another fire that's going to burn, you know, I mean, so it's, it's all about, as we said, kind of juggling those resources. We're getting a lot of people say we need more firefighters mm -hmm. need to be paid more. I'm sure the president will hear that today at NIFSI. He did raise, he did propose it, yeah. he did raise the, the wage. When I talked to Boise BLM, they said they had uh, this was about maybe mid July. They said they were fine with fire crews in terms of um, their men and women on the ground and how many. Uh, the Forest Service, though, they were telling me uh, had a couple of vacancies and needed a little bit more help in terms of actual uh, firefighters. And isn't it true that uh Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second, but that there's they, they're also doing things like extending the seasonal workers. Mm -hmm. We know a lot of college students mm -hmm. uh, fight fires in the, in the summertime and now, of course, they're going back to school. Right. But these fires are still burning. Fires are still burning. So. Well, and I mean, remember our smoky season used to be maybe for a month, if even that, you know, and mm -hmm. now, as we were mentioning at the earlier in our coverage, we've been dealing with smoky skies now for what, two and a half months, it seems like, right. as we talked about this wildfire season getting longer and longer. Well, let's uh, recap real quick the ending of the president's uh, schedule for the day. We got up to the point where he's going to be briefed at NIFSI mm -hmm. at uh, 1215. So about nine minutes from now is when that is scheduled to start. And so far, everything has been on really really on schedule and at 1255 it's going to be a tour of NIFSI where the president and other dignitaries will be able to go around and see exactly how NIFSI works. Then at 155 he is scheduled to leave Boise and then he will arrive in uh, California in I believe it's Mather, California if I pronounce that correctly to survey the damage of the Caldor fire which has been huge and very devastating and destructive and then finally those presidential duties are put on hold while he goes to Long Beach 
to campaign uh, for uh, California Governor Gavin Newsom, who faces a recall election tomorrow. So we've got presidential duties throughout most of the afternoon and then politics at night. So how this works in the media is, is we have what's called a pool camera. Usually there might be like one camera there and then they are uh, they come out and bring the footage to the rest of the news outlets. Joe Paris was lucky enough to be able to get one of those spots in terms mm -hmm. of he will be at NIFC. Uh, pretty cool assignment for so Joe we'll, Paris today. We'll get to today. see what happened inside yes. and what the president did and who he got to speak with as well. And we want to recap also, we saw earlier that the Boise Mayor Lauren McLean walked across the tarmac, met the president when he came down the stairs off of Air Force One, and it appeared that they had a pretty nice long chat for mm -hmm. two or three minutes and uh, before the president got into the limousine and headed off over to Nissi. And the mayor has been tweeting about this visit. She tweeted that uh, she said she looks forward to sharing the city's vision, including its goals within the Climate Action Roadmap. She said she also plans to give him a painting, there's a picture of it, of the Boise foothills to highlight the city's commitment to open space and uh, climate change action. Her office did confirm that the mayor would meet with the president today, and we saw that on the tarmac as well. All right, we will continue our coverage here of President Biden's visit to Boise and the National Interagency Fire Center, NIFC, here in Boise. We will continue our coverage live with a special edition of the News at Noon right after this.